Go, mental toughness. Go, go, come on. Nice throw. Nice throw. Good, good. Ready to get the perfect pass. Get him high. Good evening, Grand Canyon Volleyball fans. And welcome to another edition of GCU Men's Volleyball. This time, the opponent, the Pepperdine Waves. Each team ranked inside the top 15. Grand Canyon 10, Pepperdine 11. And alongside Dewey Jeffries, I'm Alex Larson. And this game, sure to be a thriller and almost sure to be five sets. Do we, yeah, do we real quick before the anthem, what's, what's your take on this matchup and the energy that we're going to see? Honestly, you know, the last time the Lopes went up against the Waves was back in 2010, and we saw the Waves swept the Lopes three sets to none, but now with the Lopes being, like you said, at rank number 10 and Pepperdine just below them at 11, we hope to definitely have a heck of a match tonight. And we'll see some competition from both sides. And certainly a much different GCU team than eight years ago. But uh, this Pepperdine team, if you would look at a disadvantage that really glares at you from the start, would be the record and amount of games played. Grand Canyon has their ranking at 10 after 12 games played. Record stands at 10 and 2. Pepperdine up at number 11, but maybe some discrepancy only six games played four and two and only two of those games were ranked this is the third against gcu gcu is really going to want to keep things going in the mpsf they beat lindenwood and the kindred at both of their schools so that was a huge conference start for them now let's take it to the courts for the national anthem and positive introductions Profanity, racial injustice comments, or other intimidating chants or actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated in a girls' school movement from Antwerp Gymnasium. The MPSL and Grand University, thank you for your cooperation. Tonight's prayer is led by Juven Polyganos, a junior majoring in worship arts and a member of the Thundering Herd Pep Band. Right, let's 
you guys bow your heads with me and let's talk to God. Father, I thank you for uh, this beautiful day, this beautiful evening where we can all come together in this, uh, in this place to uh, watch this sport of volleyball. I uh, thank you, God, that uh, everything that we do is in worship to you, and even this, even this sport is in worship to you, God, so I pray that we do it right, we do it well. God, I pray for all the athletes here today, I pray for an uh, injury-free game, I pray for a good game, God, and I pray for good sportsmanship on both sides. Thank you again for bringing us all here, and it's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Juven. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by our very own Thundering Herd Pep Band under the direction of the Professor, Paul Cook, and tonight his associate, Kevin Bach. Thank you. Assistant coaches Andy Heim, Brad Rostrader, and Mark Duffy. All right, Wolves fans, let's get up on our feet and let's make some noise. And let's meet the starting lineup for your Grand Canyon University Eagles. The center is a six-foot senior who plays the work of Hawaii. He is the National Player of the Month. Number three. Senior, from Colorado, 
Well, three games on campus this evening. Women's basketball, softball, and men's volleyball. And it's still a tremendous turnout. The energy is high. And how can it not be number 10 against number 11? Right now, it's Pepperdine against Grand Canyon. Absolutely. We're excited to see the Lopes play another ranked team, even though they're just one ranking below us. The Lopes definitely are excited and definitely are ready for this game. The excitement out here in the Antelope Gymnasium is high as the Lopes love seeing their team play. Well, for the Lopes, Jared Alleman will get the start unusually, but the Lopes have been rolling. They started MPSF play at Lindenwood and McKendry, a 3-2 match win and a 3-1 match win against McKinley respectfully so a great start for them they are 10 and 2 Pepperdine only 4 and 2 Dewey as we start off what do you think that has to do with the game six games for one team 12 of preparation for the other one I think it's absolutely imperative as the wave score right there the first one the Lopes have more experience as a team this season than the waves do having double the games of having played double the games that the Waves have played, they have that, that synchronicity that, together than the Waves do. That's right. It's appeared like it all year. This is going to be a, uh, quite a contest. Near side, Schwab trying to put it down. Now Chamberlain. There's the set to the near side, and Colby Harriman is going to get the kill. 2 nothing. Looking back, we can see that last season the Waves finished... 10 and 12 overall with 8 and 10 in their conference, in this conference, the MPSF. The Lopes were in a different conference last season, but had finished with a 19 and 11 record. And the top 15, and in the top 15, for the ABCA, the Lopes definitely coming into this season right here, hitting the ground running. And I forgot it, not a conference, in the first two not conference matches, but originally they were last year as the Lopes are going to get their first point. Uh, originally they were, uh, Lindy and McKendry, they were in the MIVA and had been conference rivals, but obviously GCU, now the MPSF moving on to the likes of teams like UCLA, BYU, Stanford, USC, Concordia. And it's going to be a miss hit there. So Pepperdine starts off four to one. Robert to serve. The Lopes have been doing well so far this season when it comes to playing other ranked teams. Playing hard. Will Swope gets that point right there. The Lopes now two on the board. Oh, it's going to be a back and forth match and set. I mean, we wouldn't be surprised, obviously, to see this one go to five. We've said it a couple times, but we'll see if the Lopes can use the advantage of more matches played and see if they can really just outwork them as the ball will come right to us. A couple more inches, and I would have been able to catch that. Absolutely. And it'll be interesting, too, for Pepperdine to see this new Lopes team. They haven't played us in eight years. And we were a very different team back then versus now. And we are definitely going to give Pepperdine a run for their life. Comes a serve, and that one. Too much on it from Weston Barnes. I'm sorry, Dave Wazorek. And Will now Schwab it's 5-3. to three. Will Schwab will serve. Lopes definitely going to have to work on their defense this game against Pepperdine as they are very aggressive and a very offensive team. Hart Harlow is now trying a couple times off of that nice leaping attempt by Schroeder but no teammate able to get it and point for the Waves. Six to three. Pepperdine will serve. With Zurich, 
will now serve, and this one is into the net. Now that was Max Chamberlain to serve, 13 and 19. Looks similar with the orange numbers. Substitution oh, coming no, on. Sir. Weston Barnes, number 15, will check in for the Waves. 6-4 Pepperdine. That serve. Tough all the way up off the backboard of the basketball rim. Just folded up. Top of the net a couple times. Hard Holler's not been able to get it over. Diving at it, keeps it up. Now in the back ranks. Slam down. And it's Cohen Mosier. It's another point for the ropes. So it's now five to six. Cohen Mosier to serve. Folks are definitely showing up a little bit right here. Colin Mosier now is going to serve here. Send it off, trying to get it tied up. Barely picked up by Wazurek now on the near side. Oh, man, that one was kept up in the back ranks by GC in a double touch. Looks like that is what we will have, and it is. Wolves are definitely going to have to minimize those those little mistakes that can be made. Pepperdine is a strong team and the least amount of errors is going to be very important looking forward for now. Hitting percentage for Pepperdine through six games up at 301. Very nice and consistent enough passing team put it down on a point right back to the Lotus. King always shows up. Seven to six. We got Ashton King to serve. Mazurik now far side hard hauler. Nice job by Mosier in the back ranks to keep that one up. Now in the near side. Can't put it home. Cody Williams working at the net. Off his hands and out. So Kobe Hellerman will get the kill. Eight to six. Lopes are right behind the waves. As we're getting well underway, both teams kind of warming up just a little bit. It's going to come from Hard Holler now near side. Williams that one under the crowd above us. And it's a kill for Cody. Tuna Kajiho is going to serve this one. It's going to be really important to see nice some kill. To see some more defense from both both sides. The Lopes move just a little sluggish right now. Michael Wexter. Wexter 19 kills. And the season thus far, and he'll take a serve just off the top of the net. Mosier, Caneo, serve, and that one couldn't clear the net. I believe that was King. No, trying to get that kill. It's Alleman. Maybe some nerves here as it's some of his first action this year. Absolutely. We know that, like we keep saying, the Lopes have not played this team in a while. And so they aren't exactly sure what to expect from them game-wise. Engelman goes down, but Lopes unable to get the point, and now the Waves go ahead by four. It's 11-7. Here comes Wexter. Wexter, three service aces, eight airs, and that one drops. Beautiful. In between, you saw the potential from behind. It's Alleman. Sometimes a soft touch is what's going to get it instead of a hard, intensive attack. 11 to 8. Lopes are just trailing by 3. As we are still in the first set. Seen several times Lopes just going back and forth each set against their opponent. Usually get it going towards the middle. This one tracking all the way back. Kept up. Played off the ceiling. Engelman will send it over. Now at the net, Mullahy pushed over. Nice job by Harhaller coming through, but couldn't get to the fall. Now Moser 
That one blocked at the net by Chamberlain and Mullahy. And it's another point for the Waves. Excellent, excellent save by the Lopes right there to keep the ball in play. You always want to save those opportunities and have an extra chance to catch your opponent off guard. They expect that when the ball goes that far out, it will just be out. But if you save it, they have to reconnect themselves as the ball goes out on the Waves. And the Lopes will get that point, 9-12. to 12. Yeah, Malahi giving the point right back and take advantage now. You want to get a run here on your side if you're GCU. Allen off the top at the net, put down. It seemed like it was going far side. They keep it near side in the middle with Chamberlain and no chance to keep that one up. Waves, like I said before, the off. Their offense is extremely aggressive, and the Lopes are going to have to amp up their defense and their reaction time if they're going to keep some of those from going down. Queens is uh, nice job of Williams keeping this one up. Now at the net. Back and Schroeder gets the kill. On that far corner, a little bit of cluster going on to confuse the waves, but you know what? The Lopes got the point, 13-10. Will Schwab is going to serve this one. Into the net, and there's a mistake you can't afford to have. Number 11 team, but hope they can bounce back right here and get a point. Spencer Wickens checks on the freshman from New York. A lot of guys from New York on this squad in the Midwest wanting to get to warm weather. Understandably so. Kaniho now near side Moser. This is hit by Malahi and the Lopes will take the point. Staying pretty close behind. Still down by three. The Lopes have been very consistent with keeping up and not letting the Waves get too far ahead so far. Biggest deficit is three, but it's not too bad. Bowen Mosier falling back, tracking backwards. Sent over just barely. Ingleman now in the corner. Slammed into the net by Mosier, whose point it's going to be the Waves. Timeout on the floor. Timeout called on the floor, and right now it seems like the Waves have the advantage at the net. We'll see if the Lopes can make an adjustment. We'll be back. Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tee. The Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Back inside Antelope Gymnasium right now, Drew Lopes. Well, by a staggering 54% to 0.08 in hitting percentage, and that's a big deal. They're not executing on their kills right now. Absolutely, and you know what? The Lopes are pretty even with the waves right now they have the same amount of kills for both sides but it's those errors and that hit percentage yep. which is giving them that deficit yep. exactly the the waves seem to be able to take advantage and keep it up and sometimes the waves getting it into the net and that ball falls and fails to get to the opponent's side absolutely Ashton King to serve this one for the ropes Lopes got that point. It'll be 15 to 12. Kept up. 
near side, no chance there. Beautiful. But it, yeah, deflected off the hands all the way over. Almost but, again. The loose rope couldn't get it quite over the net again. It was Zurich gets that one and seems like this Waves team is building some sort of momentum. They look good right now. Certainly out playing the Lopes in the first set. Lopes down by four. The Waves have been in the lead since the very beginning. It's a nice serve. A lot of dipping action. There's Williams flying in, finds the back corner. Coming out of that timeout, the Lopes will hopefully have a little bit more focus and be in a little bit more sync as the rest of this game goes on. Well, that'll certainly help the hitting percentage getting it into the lines. That one put down right in front of Engelman with Zurich again. Like you said before, the Lopes hit percentage significantly lower than the Waves. The Waves still around 54%, 56% now. And the Lopes are at a low 20%. That's certainly not going to help, but it's the problem is they're not ha they're having trouble receiving the balls that they get from the waves, and they will need another timeout. Right now, waves in control up 18-13. college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Welcome back. Men's volleyball action. Pepperdine Waves leading the GC Loops, 18-13. A lot of time, 11 against 10 here. A lot of energy, people still firing in right now, but the Waves seem to be the dominating team early. Hopefully, adjustments to be made for the Lopes. What do you think, Dewey, so far early? So far, honestly, the Lopes have been struggling, like we've been saying, with their hitting, but it's also been the errors that have been keeping them just below. Beautiful execution of the Hellman couldn't get that hand down. He almost got that pancake. That's how you want to come off a timeout getting a point. Whoops. Pulled a little trick play, I'll say. Hit the ball right back over to their side and tapped it over nice and gently. They're still down by four, 14 to 18. But hopefully after these two timeouts, and maybe not after a, a very aggressive, on that one. very aggressive serve of Cody Williams. 19-14. And now here comes another serve. Williams takes it. New side, not going to be able to get it to fall. Just barely outside, and now... GCU trails 2014. Absolutely. The Waves are approaching that final score of 25. The Lopes are now down by the biggest deficit of the set by six. That'll help the Lopes. Oh, get it off the hands outside the constraints. 20 to 15. And Jack Burke comes on and tries to. And we get some new. Energy going. Got to quietly and slowly creep back one point at a time. Burton with a 
nice serve. That was a nice serve. Diving in the near side. <laughs> Pointing it down is Alex Hardhaller. And several times it just seems like they've been way overpowered. The Lopes that is on the on the initial kill and just have no chance receiving it and it flies off their bodies somewhere into the crowd. Right. The Lopes just seem to be in a different headspace tonight. The energy level on the court seems to be a little lower than usual. But hopefully after some more play, they'll kind of get their their energy back. Wow, what's a really close. Space. It looks like it would have been a nice dig, but the ball just went out to the other side, and there's that other timeout for the Lopes. Got him exactly where they want him. Three points away from winning the first set. I am a sophomore at GCU, and I'm studying biomedical engineering. GCU is definitely preparing me for the next chapter in my life through the dedications of professors, the advanced technology labs, and the support from the advisors and faculty. Biomedical engineering is not easy. We are able to interact with the doctors and provide the tools they need to be successful. I want to be able to start my own company and create the crazy technologies that doctors are using and that way when I see them, like, yep, that's my product right there. I feel like I'm becoming an engineer because throughout the classes and my activities that I'm involved in working at the lounge, I'm learning how to problem solve in a short amount of time. I'm able to get an understanding what my purpose is. My purpose is to be a leader and to help everyone around me. I'm excited to learn and I want everybody else to be excited. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Pepperdine leading at GCU here. 22-15 in the first set of a long match. Three games on campus today. Women's softball. 5.30 game, and then of course women's basketball will host UTRGV tonight at 7 p.m. But back in the court here and just trying to finish out this set, maybe fight back, but if not, you got to find tendencies that can help you for next set and make adjustments. Absolutely. This is definitely a set to learn from at the beginning of this game, and the Lopes have got to use what they have done in this set right here to improve for the rest as they almost as they keep the ball in play sent over by Engelman at the net here coming through it's Kobe Harriman and again GCU no answer for that flying in so I don't know if it's the strength of the waves or they're catching the lopes off guard but Unusual play by them here in this first set. Slopes down by eight, 23 to 15. The Waves are in the lead as Whoa. they get a way, very powerful serve right there by the Waves, and that point will go to the Lopes. Just a bit outside. Yeah, I think that's in softball. Phil's on that call. Phil Katafimo. Heard a couple seconds of it actually in the background um, during one of the breaks. Sounded good. I don't know what's going on in that game, but certainly can be posted if we figure out. And now here comes a serve for Melcher, Zachary Melcher. 23 to 16. Here's the net. There it is. That one's not going to get over. There's some the defense by the ropes. Keeping the irons up. Good things happen. And the lead goes from eight to six. That's right, 23 to 17. Lopes hopefully looking to make a comeback. Melcher again with the serve. Just perfectly over the net. Almost an answer Talk for about that. Those, the, those receptions that go off the hands way into. That ball's just coming so fast, so much spin. They don't have a chance to get it over and now down to their set point, 24-17. Pepperdine looks to win this first set and take control. Chamberlain will serve, see if they can do it by way of the service ace. Not quite, Williams takes it, Melcher, far side. Shut down at the net by Mike Wexter and Alex Hardhaller. And the Waves have taken the first set. 
my company is the Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwright was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype. And, um, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. I feel like GCU really prepares you for being there in the workplace, not just like book-wise, but they really prepare you of how you should react at certain situations in the work environment. It's funny because I was going to school and managing a business at the same time, so I would learn something in the classroom and, and I would implement it right away at work or, or I would find a connection. I would be like, oh, you know what, that's something I do right now, but maybe I can improve it this way. I personally loved every single class I took because I felt like each one gave you how you should implement it in your business or in your workplace or whatever you're doing. Another thing is just every professor has a great background, great experience, um, so much feedback to give you that you just learn from them. Not everybody has the advantage to talk to their college of business um, dean and I literally everybody that I talk to knows who Dr. Gibb is so if you're still in a small environment where you get to meet your professors where they have their doors open whenever you need them. One thing that I really love about GCU is how you can see the community change. You can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope and I, and I tell it to everyone, like go to GCU, Lope sub, I'm very, very proud. Thanks for keeping it with us here. First intermission, 15 seconds from being over. The Lopes losing the first set, 25-17, but this is a Pepperdine team that looked very strong early. Dewey, what did you like from GCU, and what did you see from Pepperdine that the Lopes are going to need to adjust? You know, we like we said, that was a very strong first set from the Lopes, but we did see some, some comeback a little bit. They did synchronized just enough to, to keep it well within their means, but we would like to see a little bit more defense from the Lopes, a little bit better blocking, some more precise digging, I would say, from the Lopes to, to combat some of this aggressive opposition and some of this aggressive offense from the Waves. The Waves definitely brought the, the heat and brought the offensive attacking that first set for sure. Winning that first set, they they overpowered the Lopes, but let's hope that the Lopes can bring back some defense for this. Yeah, speaking of attack, how about seven GCU attacking airs and only one for Pepperdine? That's the reason why that first set was an eight-point loss. Well, here we go. Clock's set to go. Everyone in place, and here we go to serve it off, Malahi to serve. Hopefully the Lopes will come back from that break into the second set with a little bit of a different mindset. Malahi initiates the second half, we're underway. Shut down in the net, but outside the restraints as Williams gets enough strength on that one. Already a good start for the Lopes. One to nothing. You want to see a little bit more of that. A lot more of that, really. From the Lopes to continue. Yeah, I want to build on this now early like Pepperdine did last set, but you get the feeling this is a whole different animal. And maybe since they've only played six games, that's why they're at 11. Maybe this is a team that deserves to be top five. I mean, this. I have been impressed with what I've seen early from this Pepperdine Wave squad. Absolutely. Pepperdine has definitely shown up and pretty much been 
the dominating team on the court tonight. Absolutely a miscommunication there, but between Engelman and Williams, both went for it and went off each, either one of their arms and into the back, but you said it earlier, seems like the energy on the court for the Lopes doesn't really match what it has. They get a point, not as cheering, as excited. Down and sent over. This is Max Chamberlain again. For the Lopes right now, you can't let your highs get too high or your lows get too low. You just got to keep riding this game out. Absolutely. The Lopes definitely looking to try a little harder this set. Because the Lopes are now trailing by two. It scores three to one. And they all let it go thinking it was going to be out. But... Ref called it in, and it'll be four to one. And GC thought they were getting that point. Not quite. Four to one. Shalev Sahai. Shalev Sahai checks on and has not gotten the start. A massive ovation from the crowd as he checks on. He's the catalyst that this Lopes squad has needed this year. Down 4-1, they really need him here in order not to fall. Tracking in the crowd, can they send it over? Engelman able to do so. Into the steps, had to go to get it, but he was able to. And Lopes able to get the point. This is outside that corner. Seems like just the presence of Sada is changing the scoring on the hill. 4-2. A lot of excitement here early from this crowd. Fans next to us getting rowdy. Here comes the serve. Williams gets a lot on that one. Oh, barely able to take that one. Punched over. And Hanhar wasn't able to sneak that one past the Lopes. Saw it already. After two plays, gets a point. Four to three, the Lopes are coming back slowly. Yeah, you didn't want that lead to get to 6-1. Wanted to respond with at least a couple and it's huge for the Lopes series to look to bring it back to even early and keep momentum in the balance. This one into the net. That service error, not good for the Lopes. Those are easy points you're giving away. You're right about that. Can't give it up, especially if you want to continue being ranked and when you're playing a ranked opponent. Give them more wiggle room for lesser teams, but not here. Getting ready. Set it not to Sahara. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, gets the kill. Lopes with that point. Five to four. Everybody seeming to have a little bit more energy now that the Lopes are coming back and scoring a little bit more this set. Lobbed, hard hauler, off the head, diving back, and unable to get it, Kobe Herman. Kobe Herman to serve. Sky Engelman back, looking. As the waves go for the serve. Powerful serve by Harriman right there. Sahana blocked in the net. Nice job keeping that one alive. Kaniho King. Nice tip. Gets it to go. That'll bring it 6-5. Lopes only down by one. Lopes will stroll serving. Soft tip, but they keep it alive. Off the hands. So close. Those are those uh, receptions, service receptions, the errors that you can't have. Absolutely. Whenever the Lopes are not on the offensive, their defense is going to have to step up and keep some of these points away. 7-5. Lopes. Softball. Hold on a sec, Caneo. 
Here's Schwab put down at the net. That was nicely done by Pepperdine, but GCU's gonna get the point. That's a big point. So we on the new GCU softball stadium, the Lokes lead 5-1, bottom of the fourth against the Montana Grizzlies. Good start for them. A tournament this weekend. Flying in though was Mike Wexter. And now eight to six, keeping that lead at two. Absolutely, but we like to see a little bit more of this back and forth. The Lopes are still fighting to remain fairly close in deficit behind the Pepperdine Waves. As the Waves will serve again. Yeah, a little more consistent are the Waves. Nice job reaching back over the power. Williams can put it down. And another one of those slide plays. The Lopes go up and tip the ball back to their side so that their outside hitter can go ahead and kill that one on their side. Lobs over the net. Lamming it in is Robert Malahi and man, did that one have a lot of speed on it. Nine to seven. Pepperdine looking to push it to three. GC looking to keep it at two or one. Not quite there. Now Engelman, Schwab, right back in Schwab's face. Nice reaction time. Williams then will send it over. Now Barnes. Good Set that here for hell and that is put down by GCU. Excellent defense by the Lopes. Two blocks that got rejected, but they kept the ball moving and they eventually capitalized and got the point. Eight to nine, the Lopes are still only down by one. Kept it up there, nice job getting them out of the way. Hart Holler was in the way, and another point, so it just goes one for one for these two teams. Lopes down by two again, 10 to eight. There seems to be a little bit more of a competitive edge on the Lopes' side as this second set continues to play on. Serve coming at the net. Schwab puts that one down. Oh, Barnes keeping it at one. There's that point again. This is crucial for the ropes. They've got to find a little in so that they can come out back in the lead. Served there by Williams. Nice job keeping that one up. And then a hard haul comes flying in. And again, it seems like every time the Lopes get a point, the Waves do the same. Absolutely. Defense on both teams and offense is pretty much matching what's going on right now. Keeping the game at a one slash two point deficit. Oops. Men trail UTLGV 19-13. Early in the basketball team. And there is a service ace for Matt Chamberlain. 12-9 and finally Pepperdine able to extend their lead for more than two. Sure GC wanted to prevent that, but only three right now. They got a chance to get one back. Poor mistake by the Waves. They had gotten that third point ahead of the Lopes, but pushed it right back down to two, giving the Lopes another chance to come back forward. Robbed over. Nice job keeping that one up. And put down out of nowhere. 13 to 10. Pepperdine starting to find their groove maybe a little bit. Don't want to see this lead get extended to any more. Still hitting at a 
high, 49% compared to the Lopes. And around 31, so the Lopes at their average, the waves well above it. Sahara cannot put it down. And an exuberant block by Malahi. The Lopes are seeming to fall back into that trap that they did the first set. 14-10. Here comes off the top of the net, barely kept up by Williams. Nice job doing so. Sahara, far side. It's at home. Sahara's been a very important part of the Lopes offense so far. Having two points. And a little bit of miscommunication right there as the ball kind of funnels between the Lopes players. Yeah, timeout, timeout on the floor and much needed. 15 to 11 Pepperdine leads. GC needs adjustments. Don't go anywhere. on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business. Welcome back inside Antelope Gymnasium. Thanks for being with us. 15-11, Lopes Trail, and Pepperdine, frankly, has seemed to dominate this match so far. Absolutely. Looking again at the hit percentage, Pepperdine with 50%, and the Lopes with a measly 28% <laughs> working, trying their hardest to keep up with the waves. I mean, much better play and now performance to do so early. Hardhaller here will serve it for Pepperdine. Looking to defend here are the ropes. Here it comes. Kept up in the net. Kaniho, nice job, King, getting it over. Now at the net again. Hardhaller flying into the backside, tracking all the way back. Almost into a trash can and a point for the Waves. And an Another timeout called by the Lopes. An absolutely much needed timeout. They need to do something to find a way to stop this Waves team. We'll be right back. GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Welcome back, 16 to 11 as we get set to start again. The Lopes have been dominated so far, and uh, what does it look like they need to do, Julie, aside from just 
start to expect these hard hits from the waves. Now we're still in great bit of Asia. By now, the Lopes would know that the waves aren't going to let up anytime soon. And those aggressive, those hard attacks and those hard hits from the waves are going to keep on coming. And their defense has to be prepared and ready for them. They're ready to counter strike. Yeah, there was one right there out of the box. And now, Waves getting it over the Lopes side. Can he help to Sahana? And that was Chris Sahana! the feet of Rustin Barnes. Sahana seeming to take a liking to that far corner. Able to get a couple of points from that spot for the Lopes. 16 to 12, only down by four. That's exactly what you want out of the timeout again. And now we'll see if Sahara can get an ace or something of the sort. It is of the sort, but unfortunately a service error. And the lead goes back up to five for the Waves. Michael Lex for the serve. Wexter serving, and that's going to be a service here. They take all the mistakes they can get from the waves, which are still a few. Only one attacking here so far for the Lopes. Three in this set for the waves. Hard holler. Now with the net, this one all the way up the ceiling. Nice job tracking that one off the ceiling. Has to get bounced down. That's not easy to do. That white belt helps. Nice job. Keneal keeping it up the net. Locked was Williams. And good for a pivot nine point as it tracked out of bounds. That was a nice stop. Close quarters of the net. Coach Matt Worley was directed right towards him. Jumped out of his chair to try to give his players a chance to get the ball back but it was just too quick. Fight at the net and won by the Waves. Crashing over the net, over taking land at now 19-13. They continue to stretch this one. The Waves seem to come in as a tsunami instead of just little waves. Drowning the Lopes in points and offensively right now. The Lopes are working to try to keep their heads above water. Oh, this would be a poor start to go down two sets to none because then it's much easier to finish as the Lopes will get a point there. So by five, but you go down by two and it's really all over from a mental standpoint. And the momentum the team ahead gets is almost unbelievable. Kept up. Put down. Max Chamberlain, with the hit. Max Chamberlain goes into the near side he corner. And Lopes five away from heading into the third set down by two sets. Lopes seem to have had a good start. Kaniho, Schwab, gets the point. Blocked at the net, but nothing doing. Cody Williams to serve. Lopes trail by five. That was an important point to gain. We'll see if they can keep it, and they will not. Well, tell you what, we talked at the top of the broadcast. Spencer Wickens comes back on. We talked at the top of the broadcast. Spencer Wickens to serve. Now the 12 games compared to six for the Lopes. And the 12 for the Lopes, six for the Waves could possibly affect them positively in the future in this game, but that has not happened. Seems like this Pepperdine team is just as well gelled as this GCU team in, and they're only halfway through their season as the Lopes. And then keeping up in the back lines now, Kimiho, Mosier, diving play, now kept up here. Hard Hall is going to get a chance to kill all the way up in the air. Kimiho 
Engelman near side, Schwold kept up. Nice rally we got here going at the net. It's down by Schwold. Schwold saw the opportunity. Hit the ball down. You can see the look on his face. He's getting a little frustrated. Point two. Spit point to the putt to the waves. Not sure why, but that pretty much you got to start getting ready for the third set here. Kamiho, Engelman, Mosier. Point will go to the lakes. Coming in for the Lopes, number seven, Jack Burton. Jack Burton to serve. The Lopes still have a little bit of an, a little bit of an opportunity to come back. They're only down by six. But like you said, Alex, it is time to start thinking about that third set. That is the turning point. Diving, nice job in the corner. Hard hard. Just gets over the ball and gets everything behind it. Able to get the trajectory such that no one's able to pick it up. And now checking on. Still be number 10, Caleb Denmark. He's not from Denmark, he's from the Redlands, California. And he will serve six foot or six foot four junior. Nice serve. Ace coming off the bench. Man, that ball had some spin and extracurricular activity at the end on it, didn't it? That dig looks promising. Lopes got a hand just underneath that, but the angle made it go just outside, and the wave took that point. But Ashley King again. Ashley King again with a point. Crucial where it's needed. 17-24. Lopes are down by seven. Near side here. Pushes it up. Kaneho. Blocked. Mosier. A Schwab couldn't put it down. And that will do it. Two sets to none. The Wolves will try and come back here for the third set and force the fourth and fifth. We'll be right back here for the division. 25-17. Well, it's great because we obviously we have Bobo back and she had a she had a great summer touring with the Canadian national team as well as the Canadian junior team and Mariah is going to be healthy this year so we're going to have one senior one sophomore pitcher but two returning leading pitchers on our staff we used all three of them last year and and obviously we're missing Taylor Nolan but I think Lexi and Yessi coming in they're just going to give us more depth and they're very different from each other so it's going to give us a variety coming in not only as starters but also coming in off the bench the big key for us is mariah being healthy she had a great year last year up until kind of her last weekend against Seattle when she just, she couldn't go anymore because of her injury. But, you know, we expect a lot out of Bo coming in. All of the returners, I feel like, they're going to have, whether they're starting or coming off the bench, I think they, they now that they've been through the program at least one year, they understand the level of expectation and, and what's at stake now that we're postseason eligible. So, you know, I we know the Twins are going to go out and be great because they are. Bianca's going to come out. I think Bianca's going to have a great senior year at first base. You know, and then, of course, the two senior catchers. Lainey Gomez in uh, in center field, she's going to anchor that down. And, and I think as long as she just goes out and plays like Laney and doesn't press and try and put the team on her back, I think she's going to have another great season too. That's where we want to be. We want to be in those games. We want to have that opportunity. And in order to do that, it helps us to go against these tough opponents. When we get into a situation of being on a big stage, we've already been there. We've already faced 
the UCLA's, the Arizona's, the Utah's. Um, so we're not we're not going to be intimidated by it when it comes down to a postseason chance. You know, and it's just going to get us better. We learn, and it's nice profile games, not only for our program, but for the university as well. We did our goals the other day, and, you know, we talked about RPI, and, and we talked about our, our non-conference schedule, and we obviously know it's tough, but it's not only going to make us better, it's going to hopefully set us up for a postseason opportunity. We want to win the conference, and then we want to win the conference tournament so we can get into postseason, because as we know, as soon as we get into postseason, the season starts all over again, and everything is open. So those are our goals right there. We, we want to get into regionals and then uh, and then see how deep we can go into the postseason. We are back here for the beginning oh, of the third you know set. The, the final set, if the Lopes do not respond and change their way of We're playing, Julie, it seems like the Waves have really been dominating this whole game, and they know Absolutely. And you know what? That's what I was saying before. The Lopes seem to be drowning right now from this Waves offense, and... This, like you said, is the turning point. This is where the Lopes can either continue the game or let the Waves take over again. And after eight years, you would want to see the Lopes improve with how well they've been doing, especially this season. You would want to see them kind of have an upset or at least a little bit of an uh, uh, offset against the Waves after so long and after improving so much. And unfortunately, it seems like this Pepperdine team is different animal. I mean, they just look good and pretty flawless so far. There's a reason why they are ranked where they are only through six games. Engelman. Get the kill. It's Carl Moser to start off. Every night, feel free to stay on your feet. Zachary Melcher, sir. Now Zach Melcher will serve. All the way up there. This job receiving that one. Good job of Engelman to keep that one up. Melcher now put down by Swerven. Jeez, amazing. Their work at the net is still able to get it inside the court. Michael Lester, sir. Absolutely, the Pepperdine Waves just seem to have a completely different playing style than the Lopes have been used to. And that'll be Lopes' ball as the serve goes out and is out from the antenna on the net. But looking back at last season for the Waves, the Waves finished sixth in the MPSF. As the Lopes get another point here, it'll be three to one. Biggest lead the Lopes have had in an entire set is not all game. It's been a while since they've had this and looking to build off it, see if they can do so. Hard holler keeps it up. And it's put down by Zork. Three to two. Lopes still lead it. He's serving. Mosier, nice job keeping that one up by Weston Barnes again. Oh, so Mosier gets the kill. It's 4 2. And into this set. So far, looking pretty decent. We hope they keep up this, this behavior for the entirety of this whole third set, as it could be game changing for them. Lopes usually seem to respond yeah, to elimination time and have done that there. Cullen Moser finding it in 5-2 lead. There it is, the excitement and the energy is filling up. Comes the servo, oh, almost mistaken. Put down by the net again. He's like six to two. Picking up some momentum, lopes up by four now. 
And whatever it is, Caleb Glazer serves. Just seemed to have a little bit of a special touch. Here we go, there's the serve, kept up in the back. Nice job lobbing that one over. A smart play to kind of wind up, but then pull back at the end. And Pepperdine cuts it up in half. Pepperdine waves smart adjustment, quick adjustment, to get that point back on the board. Instead of attacking aggressively, they realized the Lopes were catching on, changed it up on them just a little bit. Powerful serve. Nice job, and then I'm not sure what the call is, but the Waves will get the point. May have been a net violation, and now Dave Wazorek will serve it again. Two in a row. Deficit back down to two. The Lopes still up. Almost miss hit. Now going back in the crowd, kept up. And then sent over. Then they get the point off the top. Sticking with it. It's Pepperdine. That was a nice move by them. We'll see who win this one. Almost to me. As that ball came over our heads, a stampede of Pepperdine players came at us. Trying to get the ball over. Served there by Schwab. 7-4, shut down, and this point will go back to the wave, so it's back within two. Still a significant nice improvement in play by the Lopes. Absolutely, they seem to have woken up now, and hopefully not too little too late. They can sneak back in this one. Might be in that college mentality. You wake up late for class, but you still show up anyway. Oh, that's a service ace, and it brings them back within one. And bring this one back to tie and let the Waves back take the lead. Don't know if they'll give it back. You want to keep this lead here for GCU. Flying in. A strange response by the Waves. They almost seem to watch the ball fly over the net, land on their side of the court. Nobody seemed to move a whole lot. Eight to six, slopes down, uh, up by two. Comes the serve. Lozier, oh, nice one. Coming back over the net, though. Beautiful trick. And put down again, Melcher. They did not see that coming at all. Zach Melcher decided to just take the point himself and toss it right over. Colin Mosier again. Beautiful, powerful serve. That was a nice serve. Good job to get underneath that ball by Pepperdine. And out on. Pepperdine, the Lopes, another point, 10 to 6. They are up again, back by four. Doesn't seem like the Lopes are giving this one up. They've come to life. Up four now and continuing to pile it on. Maybe the Waves need a timeout or something to get them back in it, but nowhere close yet in this set. Barely. That was a laser across the net from the closure. Just over the net. Looks like the Waves are going to call a timeout. Now there's the timeout and called by Pepperdine. 11-6. The Lopes have some team. momentum. TCU, earn your degree on GCU online. is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges, on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. 
me choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. I am a GCU low, and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Pepper Dine to call a timeout at 11-6, and it seems like this set has been the complete opposite of the first two, and exactly what they needed because it's do or die time right now for the Lopes. Seems like they have stepped up to the challenge. Like I said before, it's better to wake up late than not to wake up at all. The Lopes, like you said, Alex, up by five. Another aggressively well done. That one is going to get inside the line as CCU didn't think it was in. It was clearly in by our count. And only oh, seven now. Colby Harriman serving for the Waves. Hopefully the Lopes will continue to have some strong defense this set. Sure, well that one dipping at the net, put down. And that is what Pepperdine needs. It's 11-8, they're getting back in point by point. Trying to keep up that momentum. The Lopes are going to need this one. Engelman, beautiful dig. Harold just couldn't get to that one. And you think about it, as hard as they hit the ball, the reaction time that volleyball players have is incredibly impressive. Ashton King serving. At the net, trying to get a final score of the softball game. Can't. I know GC won. Not sure by what score. And this one goes to the low. 13-8. All GCU. GCU maintaining a healthy lead this set. Very comfortable, too, indeed. Can't let Pepperdine sneak their way back in. Got to keep this pressure and keep them in this hole. That one, beautiful play. Colby Herman shows that any of these guys can play and they know how to get the points. Absolutely. 13-9. Lopes up by four. Still comfortable. Of course, you want to make it as high as possible, but... Hart Holler will serve. Had trouble receiving his serves today on the near side. And this one goes to Luke Turner and the Lopes. Lopes making some interesting decisions on the court. But if whatever gets them the points, they will certainly take it. And they're coming in bunches right now. That one almost a service ace. The far side, shut down to the net. And shut down. So another point, it's 15 to nine, and it seems like this one's in the bag here for the Lopes. The Waves haven't even broken 10 yet. They're still one point away, but the Lopes have done an incredible job keeping them at bay so far this set. Almost another rejection, good block. They are so fast at the net, all the waves, and it's impressive reaction time. This one shut down by Pepperdine. Stays within five. Figure in a game like this, that may be too much. 25-17, the first two sets. Eight point lead, and so it's been a fair amount of spread in points. It hasn't been just two or three. Goes back over off the reception, now set up, shut down. <laughs> for the Lopes. The blocks have increased. 
Good execution, and the Lopes are doing much better in front of the net against the Waves, 16-10. And Luke Turner will serve. And it'll be the Lopes point again, 17-10. Double touch, and Lopes look forward Luke to the serve. fourth set right now. They're going to keep it going, and hopefully tie back up and force a fifth and final set. Near side off Engelman's hands, tracking all the way back, kept up, nice job. And he's able to send it back over. GC Wong this point, will they get it? Yes, they will. Another puck for the Lopes, 18 to 10. The Lopes. Time out, win. Time out called by Pepperdine, don't go anywhere. Christian affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Good sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you can jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It's about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It is fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Odds. And we are back. The Lopes just need seven more to close it out. And force a fourth set against the Waves. Trail 2-0 right now, but looking good as far as set number three here. So kept up. Pepperdine coming off the timeout with the point. That's what they wanted, but I don't know if it's too little too late as Harriman will get it done. As long as the Lopes keep up this kind of play that they've had offensively and defensively, then the Lopes should be able to come out on top of this set and force it forth. Seems like they've been a different team in this set, but just got to get it done with. And GCU will get the score. Six away. Jack Burton to serve. Lopes put in Jack Burton. Again, he will serve off of that point. The Lopes got 19 11 as we continue in this third set. Top of the net. And Ashton King is the one to do it. So five away. Just rolling through this wave squad right now. It's more of a tide here, more than a wave. The Lopes have only had two errors in this set compared to the wave six. Another rejection by Colin Mosier. Well, this one's all over. The Lopes have this one in the bag. 21-11. Burton just needs to close it out. Four more points needed for the Lopes. It's as if the teams out here on the court switched places. Yes, exactly. It's a great point. Not wanting to give another point, and there it is. Point for the Waves. Lopes up by nine. 21 to 12. Four points away from securing victory on this third set. There's the serve. Kept up, put down at the net. And there's two in a row for Pemberton. 
Now would not be the time for the Lopes to fall apart. They gotta continue. Oh, this one's over. This momentum that they've had. Lopes have this set in the bag. Kept up, pushed over. Nice job pushing back forward. By the, yeah, That's this out. one is going to be out. So three away here for the Lopes as they go back up by nine. Will Schwab to serve. The Lopes bench in a completely different personality as the Lopes near victory right here smiles on all their faces as they realize that they can keep on playing and keep fighting. Oh, nice athletic play tracking back just to keep that one up. And another point for the Lopes. Two points away. Each team needs to think about the next set as this one is already over. Lopes officially have the biggest lead of the entire night, 10 points. Nice job keeping that one up. Now Engelman looking to get the job done to Mosley there. Oh, Mosley! 24-13. Now that lead is increased by 11. Lopes are one point away from this victory in this third set. That, that service air does not bring them any closer. Coming in from Pepperdine, number seven, Spencer Wickens. Wickens back Spencer on. Wickens to serve. And serving for the Waves. See if it'll be ended here or keep drawing this one out. Want both teams with the most momentum and energy they have. So let's see if GCU can just finish it here. Everdine side, and now tossed over. Hot Holler didn't have a chance on this one. Oh, oh, King. To one the third set. It is two sets to one. Three more minutes. We'll see if they can tie it up at two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back here for the conclusion of this one. Students at Grand Canyon University have a rich and vibrant residence life community. There are events throughout the year to make friends, give back to the community, and just have fun. There are 19 living areas offering students amenities such as pools, laundry, fitness centers, indoor and outdoor common areas, and the choice between suites and apartment style living. The apartments such as Roadrunner or Diamondback provide accommodations for two or four students. The majority of floor plans even provide students with their own bedroom. In the four-person floor plan, apartment residents enjoy sharing a kitchen, living room, and two bathrooms. The residence hall suites, such as Ocotillo, provide accommodations for four or six students split between two bedrooms. The suites are fully furnished and provide each student their own bed, desk, and dresser. They also include bathrooms, closets, and a furnished living room. Either choice provides you with a safe and comfortable environment to study, live, and have the time of your life. Each living area at GCU is an intentional community that helps promote relationships, servant leadership, and self-awareness. There are students serving as resident assistants to act as a resource and foster community. There are also life leaders to lead Bible studies and provide spiritual counsel. Many living areas also have a resource called the Learning Lounge, where students can participate in study groups or receive assistance in a particular subject. In addition to all these great amenities in each building, living on campus means you're in walking distance of restaurants, coffee shops, athletic venues, and hundreds of events such as concerts, plays, and more. On-campus living at GCU is so much better than the residence hall experience at most universities. It's no wonder that over two-thirds of our students choose to live on our beautiful campus. Welcome back, folks. Dewey, two sets to one in favor of Pepperdine, but you got to like what you saw from GCU there in set number three. Absolutely. And like I said at the beginning of the third set, it is not bad to wake up late and still show up to the game, and that's exactly what the Lopes did. They woke up and they showed up, and they won that third set 25-14 to 14 by a better deficit than... Pepperdine won the last two sets, which was 25 to 17 for both of those. And we want to see the Lopes continue 
this this gameplay and this energy and momentum that they've had in this third set as we go into the fourth in about 10 seconds here. The Lopes minimizing their errors and maximizing their defensive blocking and their offensive attacking. We want to see some more of that. The Lopes are on track to maybe come out on top. Well, despite All right, remember those fans. I being believe you know the deal. Powered you know the in feet. the first two sets, they completely different team Let's there. Going, see if they can keep the momentum rolling. We will start it off here. Everyone ready to go. Everyone in their places, and the first Malay ten points the will tell us a lot about how this set Malay, will sir. end. And if this match will end yet, or if we've got one more. Schroed. Kept up. Now on the near side. First point was Zurich. Tried for it. Sent over. Flying in there. Kept up by Engelman. Now they're looking good. It's the Ayers that aren't coming back to hurt the Lopes like they did earlier. Diving in the back lines. Now a fight again. Now don't you see a real great the for that point right there. Both teams making sure that the ball stayed in the air. No matter what. And the Lopes came out with the point. Pepperdine just needing to get some points here. Unable to get it past GCU, and there they are able to do it. Colby Harriman ties it up. David wants Zorik to serve. The Lopes are continuing to play with extreme urgency as if they do let the Waves get any kind of momentum, that will kind of doom them as one more set. And Pepperdine will win, but the Lopes will get that point right there. Luke yeah, Luke Turner will get that one, and Luke Turner seems like the, now the Waves have switched and gotten the uh, trouble receiving these hits, and the Lopes seem to be doing it no problem at all. That one is going to be a point for Art Holler. He has been good all night long. Max the serve. Ten kills for Hartholler. Harriman's also in the double digits. Two two right now. Waves go up to serve. And the serve is there. Close. Up by one, three two. Yeah, maybe some nerves coming on for the waves. 3-3, three, three. they seem to be stressing out just a little bit now after getting blown out in that last set. And Hardhauer can't get that point. Attacks the ball right into the antenna. Plays in a serve. And the Lopes will get another point, 4-2. Lopes doing really well still. With their defense and keeping up just over the net. Almost a service ace. Shut down the net and into the game. It's three points in a row for the Lopes. Five and two. Caleb Blazer serving again. Waves try to do something different. Able to get that one, but again, I mean, I don't know about you, Julie, it's early, but it just seems like GCU is going to be able to force this fifth set. Absolutely. They, just, they really do seem like a different team than we saw in the first two sets. And now that... Wow! That was an incredibly powerful serve. By number six, wow. Colby Harriman, but the Lopes will get that point six to three. 
as spitting it as hard as you can is not the goal of the ball. Near side, and that one is finally put down by Harbour. He's been unsuccessful in the last couple of attempts, but there he gets it to go. Six to four, the score line. The Lopes lead this one. Trailing two sets to one, but nipping at the heels of Pepperdine. Kept up now at the net. Melcher set it for King, and now it's going to be Melcher. Both times tonight, Zachary Melcher has done a little side tap and put the ball over to the other side of the court, and he has capitalized both times and gotten the point. Seven to four, the Lopes lead. Engelman dives, keeps it up. Nice job now at the net. See him get it far south. Down and front. The Lopes continue to gain momentum and get more points as the bench explodes with excitement with that point. Eight to four. Lopes definitely increasing. Yeah, and they look better. Pepperdine now seems to be scared. And, uh... They really seem to be playing very poorly. That point going to Pepperdine. That's a big point for them. They like that one. Trailing 8-5. Looked like it could have gone either way. Whether the rejection was pushed back onto a ways player's hand or not. The ref said it didn't. And that was a Rough, rough service error right there. I don't know what's going on with the Rays, but they are not able to make these serves. Not doing so well right now. Ashley, take the serve. King serves it for the Lopes. Kept up. Nice job keeping that one up again. Lopes up by five early in this fourth set. Definitely doing better in a timeout. This ball. Yeah, this Pepperdine team seems to be scared. They have lost their way. 10-5 Lopes lead. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting-edge next-generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to Antelope Gymnasium. The doubleheaders go after this match. Head on over to the Lopes looking to finish out this fourth set and get to the fifth one. After going down 2-0, they look to win two in a row, and it looks good so far. Absolutely. As we get started here, the Lopes have been doing an incredible job. But just as we've seen right here, the Waves have been making a lot of mistakes this fourth set. Aston King serve. Ton of mistakes. 17 attack errors now for the Waves. 14 for the Lopes. And this Pepperdine team looks completely different. And not very strong. Whatever timeout, whatever happens. 
happened in that timeout didn't seem to change much of their gameplay as the Lopes get two back-to-back -back points. An error from the Waves and a rejection by the Lopes. Served by King, 12-5. to five. Schroll keeping that one up. Now Melcher punches it over. Kept over again. Now GCU. Overall, even with a few points here and there for the Waves, the Lopes are up 12 to 6, but their, their gameplay is seriously improved. And there is another service error by the Waves. Yeah, that's this a bad team is serve. completely different. Both teams are different. Like I said, they switched. They must have completely switched positions. Well, we knew there was a strong possibility of it going into five sets, and that's what we have. It seems like shut down again by the low, or not quite. 13 to 7, still a six point Game deficit. Thirteen to seven, the waves are gonna go out and serve. That one actually got over the net. Kept up, tries to be put down at the net again, and there's Engelman to dig it out. There's Melcher now. Still almost pushed down, not quite. Rally we have going here, and this one goes to Pepperdine. It's always tough, those attacks that hit the, te the tip of your fingers and bounce way on the other side of the court. 14 to 8 is the score. Pepperdine taking their time now. Trying to get themselves back in the head. And there's another point for the Lopes. Luke Turner gets the point right back for GCU. It's 14 to 8. Turner is The Lopes are keeping this lead. They gained early on in the set. And they still keep it. Quick work of that one by Max Chamberlain. He gets a point. Looking to bring it back within three or four. He's trailed by five or six for a while. Spencer 14 to 9, a little bit a little bit different of an atmosphere in here in the Antelope Gymnasium for sure. Alright, it has changed. Yes! Extending the lead to six. It looks like we're starting to see that the traditional Lopes team that we've seen this whole season. They've been incredibly successful this year. The fifth set will only go to 15. Remember, not 25 is this one into the net. 15 to 10. Not a huge deal. Caleb Denmark will come back on. And the last time he served, the first time he got an ace. See if he can do that here. 15 to 10. Needing something to get back in this one are, his, are the waves. There it comes, unable to work his magic there. And he's on the far side, 16 to 10. Aggressive, aggressive ropes that we're seeing right now. Belts are being called to the referee's stand. I believe the ref is telling Cullen that the team has to stay back and they can't celebrate or extend out too far. Yes.
Will Small, yes sir. The FC will be very particular about the support that the Lopes are having right now. But the Lopes go into it again. That one to Pepperdine. It seemed like she went in GCU's point. A substitute comes on. Noah Dyer, the sophomore, comes on. Says he's 6'5", but not sure. That's quite accurate. Maybe 6'3". Here it comes. Take it in the corner. Schroeder and a point for Justin 17-11. It looks like one of the Waze players just barely touched the ball. It'll be 17-11. Just a little too hard on that serve right there. Service air for the Lopes. It'll be 17-12. Michael Wexner serve. Interesting, this game is seeming to be a battle. Usually we see it back and forth in a set, but yeah. it seems like the sets have been known as the Lopes get that another point right there. It would be 18 to 12, but the Waves took the first two sets, and it is looking like the Lopes are going to take these second two, and it'll go all the way up to five sets. Yeah, absolutely, after the first two, you never would have thought there would be five sets, but now the Lopes making it almost evident that we will see a fifth set. Serves away by a Turner. 19-12. They are just five points away from winning this fourth set. Low, low serve. Put down off the shoulders. Wanting to finish it there, but not quite looking to get to 20. It's 19-13. Coming in from Pepperdine, number six, Colby Harriman. Sub for Pepperdine is six, Colby Harriman. We're going to get something going late, maybe, but we'll see. At the net, nice play. Is that out to a three for three for that close against the net turnover. 20 to 13. That's exactly the point that they needed. They are five away. Yep, almost there. We said the fifth set will go to 15. And it looks like that's what the Lopes need. Just keep this momentum going. They're going to want to get right back on the court after this one. Wazurk. Makes it 20 to 14. Coming in for the way for the 22 and Alex Hartmuller. David Wazurk to serve. It's been impressive to watch these teams play against each other and completely transition from good playing to excellent playing. Down the line, man, I was really finishing well tonight. That's 21 to 14. The Lopes are up by seven and away by four. And that one is in for the Waves. It'll be 21 15. That point there. 21 15, still a comfortable lead. Just needing four more to finish it out. And of course, an improbable fifth set. 
Rope's hit percentage is about 40% right now. While the waves have gone all the way down to 30%. Mosier again, 22 to 15. Just a bit far on that serve, 22 to 16. Not enough on that one. Not too much on that one, I should say. Harriman. Sends this one off, and that is going to get the corner. Just inside. 22-17, still five points. He's a lead for the Lopes. The Lopes at the ready. Still looking to come out on top of this. Only three points away. But that is three points in a row for the Waves as they bring it up to 22-18 as the Lopes take a timeout. Yeah, we will take one, two, 22-20-18. Don't be back. I'm a senior here at GCU, and I'm studying marketing. Moving on campus is one of the best decisions ever. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Throughout my time here at GCU, I've needed $20,000 worth of assistance, but through my on-campus position and the multiple scholarships, I've been able to earn the money each year to pay that back, so by the time I walk across the stage, I'll have no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel, Canyon 49 Grill, and coffee shop GCBC for real-world learning opportunities. Hospitality students can gain workplace skills and leadership training on the GCU Championship Golf Course featuring brand new amenities. Across every enterprise, you have the chance to network, learn, and grow. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. We are back here looking for the conclusion of this fourth set and the beginning of the fifth set. Dude, there's a lot of excitement in the house right now. Absolutely. The Lopes have created a completely different atmosphere in this gymnasium from the beginning of the game. The Lopes lost the first two sets. 25-17 for both, but in that third set they showed up and they came out and won 25-14 and are on track to win this fourth set, leading 22-18. Little points given up here, but I'm not going to let that affect them. There it is again, another service error by the Waves. It'll be 23-18. Can't let those mistakes to really come back. And they said this fifth set is only going to 15. Will Schwab is going to serve for the Lopes right now. Perfect serve. GC has been surfing this wave the last two sets. Looking to continue riding out the wave until after the fifth with a win and a complete comeback. Point there for Pepperdine. 22 19. Excellent defense and offense for the Lopes right there, but just got in between the block and the net for the Lopes. And the Waves took that point. Okay, on the feet, hard hauler. Good serve taken there. Schwab. Denied and back to within three comes Pepperdine. I don't expect they get another point. GC will take a timeout, but no such feelings coming on here as the Lopes can handle this, and they have done it all night. 
need to stop Hart Hurler's serve right here. Still taking this oh, sweet time. One. Kept up now, Melcher. Just a point, 24-20 there, one away from getting a comeback, and man, oh, this is an exciting sir. fifth and final set. Absolutely, the Lopes will only need 15 to win in that fifth set. Yep, got to win by two though, remember. Beautiful serve. 24 to 20. And there it is. Back. Down from two sets to none. Short will go to a fifth set. Pepperdine looking to recover there, and they need to do that. Don't go anywhere. The exciting fifth set coming up. We are back here for the fifth and what will be the final set regardless of what happens. And man, have the Lopes really earned this one and wouldn't this just be the icing on the cake to come all the way back and get this one? Absolutely. The Lopes have been consistent after that third set. And uh, the Lopes really just turned it around for themselves. They oh, kind of scared the waves a little bit in that third set. And ever since, they've been, they've been the dominators on this court. Whereas the Waves were the ones dominating them in the first two sets. But now we have the support of all the fans out here in this fifth and final set of tonight's matchup. It will either be Grand Canyon University Lopes or Pepperdine Waves. As is tradition, 
We'll go to mid-set. We'll go to 15 points. Or they will have to win by two, and they will switch sides at eight. Here we go. Underway, Melcher to serve. Who will get the first point? No ropes. There must be something special that Zachary Melcher does. Everything he's done tonight is giving him a point. As a result, ropes are up 1 nothing. Nice serve, trailing back towards the end line. Now's when you need your best play at the net. And that's a GC. There's that net violation on the waves, and they will take The Wolves will take that point. Melcher again. Melcher serves that one trailing a lot. We want this start. <laughs> Right now, and this is unbelievable timeout called on the court. 12 points away from an unbelievable win. Don't go anywhere. In the pool. On the court. We wear our game faces under the lights. But sometimes our toughest opponents aren't wearing a uniform. Instead, we confront them internally. Mental illness affects one in four adults in the United States. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. If you or someone you know is fighting a silent battle, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Thanks for staying with us. You're just joining us. Ropes went down 2-0. In sets, brought back to destroy them in three and four, and now we are here in five of the Lopes up by three to start off three nothing. Absolutely, and both teams are ready on the court before the timeout timer runs out, ready to get the playing started. Lopes, Lopes obviously wanting to keep the momentum. They have had nothing but positive energy. Oh, Harhala gets the kill. Another one for the 13. Owen Marshall was looking for that one, but just caught him off guard and slipped in his hand. And that'll give the Waves their first point this set. Here comes the serve. That one all the way up. And that one way too tight. That has been a big problem for the Waves the last two sets. Those very powerful serves just going way too far out. Well, this is why you got to wonder if a team with this few games should be ranked this high. Very inconsistent. Started off looking like a top 10 team finished by not even looking close to an even ranked team. And uh, looking to stay alive here and stay relevant. But Horrible finishing performance by Pepperdine and a tremendous performance by GCU. Absolutely. They did start off a little slow themselves, but in the end, the team that comes out playing the best will win. There is another service error by the Waves. Five to two. GC sits at 10, Pepperdine at 11. Next matchup, number two, UCLA. This would bring in momentum towards that one. This hit and fight the net. GCU gets the point. Six to two, and they're seven away. Looks need two more points before the sides switch. They can continue 
climbing to victory tonight. Yeah, this team, Pepperdine, looks very poor right now, and it seems like they are kind of sulking there, but Hart Hall are able to get a point and save something. Keep it at a half, six to three. Michael Wetzke will serve for the waves. There's been a lot of miscommunication and silly mistakes by Pepperdine tonight. There's the serve at the net. Now it's a major. 7-3. The ropes continue racking up points here in this good set. They seem to want to win a little bit more than Pepperdine does. Yeah, it seems like right now they are putting it all together. Here at the net, push through. Try to keep that one alive. Switching sides. All the energy is with GC here. Absolutely. Everybody is screaming and yelling and having a good time. The Lopes 8 to 3. All they have to do is make it to 15. Seven more points, and they will come out on top. Service errors have really been killing the waves ever since about midway through the third set. They have 16 service errors, while the Lopes only have nine, and they have not made very many since their first two lost sets. How about attack errors to 21 13 uh, in favor, uh, 21 15, that is. Pepperdine uh, with 21 and GC with 15, but especially amazing considering. They had, the Lopes had eight attacking errors after the first set, and now with the 15, and we're already at the fifth set. So they've really been able to minimize those, and as a result, I mean, you see it in their play. Eight through right now, and they're dominating this team. Absolutely. Look to sweep them under the rug here. Lopes are definitely looking for a win over Pepperdine tonight. As like we were talking about at the beginning of the match, that the Lopes have not played Pepperdine in eight years, and the last time they did play them, they swept them three sets to none. The Waves swept the Lopes. And it looked like it was going to go that way again. But the Lopes have definitely changed that perspective completely. Lopes number 20, Will Schwab is going to serve. Yeah, here comes Schwab. Eight to three. Not sure what the call, what's going on right now. Not sure where there's silence in the arena. Not sure what the discrepancy is on which side. It seems like there are GCU fans yelling towards the Pepperdine bench. I'm not really sure why Pepperdine We'll meet up together. And the fans will continue to put on the pressure so they can't think quietly. An interesting discrepancy considering that in the in confined space of the arena, anybody could yell from anywhere in the stands and be heard by the players. I'm not sure why they would complain about such a thing. All righty, here we go. Here's at the net. Good going down, kept up a miscommunication on the GCU side. Will fall to Pepperdine. Eight to four, still a nice cushion, at least seven away from taking this match. This looked like Engelman got a little tripped up trying to come after that one. Malay, he served, kept up by Engelman now at the net. Put down, nice job by the Waves, keeping that one up. This one's not going to catch the restraints. To play for GCU, nine to four as they keep closer to that victory. Absolutely. 
Energy is the highest it's been all night here from the spectators. Let's see what Colin Moser can do. That one way too hard. Not getting a hand of a Pepperdine player. So the point will go right back to the Waves. 9-5 still. You like that four-point lead. 8-8, eight, eight, 11, and 5 have been the deficits so far. So it'll be Wazurik. The Wolves got to make sure that they continue to keep up the entire... Not sure what they're waiting for here. seem to be stopping the play a little bit too often for the crowd's preference. You've got to figure that the longer they wait, the more pressure comes on them. I mean, this place is loud. I've never heard it this loud in my life. And I've been in here for every volleyball game the last two years. Hasn't been this loud. Far side. Melcher. Near side. Turned up. Turned up. like the whistle was blown before the ball even hit the ground because there was a net violation, but it would have been the low point either way. And Jack Burton has come back onto the court and will serve for the ropes as they lead 10 to 5. Yeah, he's done well serving. See what he can do here. Five away. They lead by five. There's the serve. Far side, and that one's too far. That's a point for the Lopes, and they are four away. 11 5. Hardhauer doesn't like that call, but we saw it pretty clearly. No chance. Timeout called by the Waves. Some jabbing between sides, but that'll Looks have like to wait. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back college to further my education and define my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Well, a warning or something for the Pepperdine side. Not exactly sure what or who it was on, but nonetheless, they've got to keep their mouths wide here towards the end. Otherwise, that will get them in trouble. And now, here we go, 11 to 5. Jack Burton to serve it. And Cantaloupes come all the way back. Too far, and it's 12 to 5. Either way you look at it, this will be a monumental collapse for the Pepperdine Waves and an absolute scorcher for the Lopes and a must have, and uh, one that will propel them up the rankings, hopefully to 9 or 8. This one into the night. Waves certainly unhappy overall with the last couple of calls that have been coming out from the refs. Trying to get everything they can to get some points on the board. 12 to 6 is the score. Folks need three to win it. 12 6. There it is. Kept out. Melcher near side. <laughs> Luke Turner, and they are two away. 
from finishing this one out. Thomas Walker. If the Lopes head coach, Matt Worley, kind of planned this out just to toy with the Pepperdine Waves. That, that one goes out. out. Ooh, close. Not quite, though. Coming in from Pepperdine, number 10. 13-7, Lopes still two away. Caleb Denmark Caleb coming Denmark on, checking serve. on. And first time he came on, obviously, a service ace. Second time it was handled with a little more ease, but you got to try anything in this situation. And here they go. There's a serve received by Engelman. Melcher. Now it cuts out. What a way. Zachary Melcher. Fire starter tonight. 14 to 7. The Lopes are up by 7. But that's irrelevant because they need one more to win. And we're at the point here. We just kind of let the crowd take over. And you can hear how loud this is. Here we go. Can they come all the way back? Not there. You guys can hear how loud it is. If they get it, right here, 14 to eight. Loud on their feet. Kept up. Melcher, near side. Moser, tracking over. Now the Pepperdine side. Melcher sets, going. Push. Oh, oh man, that one just missed. I didn't want to talk too soon. I thought it hit the corner, but not quite. 14-9. The Lopes are hitting hard. Trying to make sure they come out on this one. Doing the makeshift skull chance for GCU. Not the Minnesota Vikings, but almost exactly like it. Here we go. Kept up by Engelman. That's how it has a lot of speed on it. And it's all over. The Lopes take it 15 to 9. Out of five sets, the Lopes win three of them. And that is it. The first time ever the Lopes have defeated the Pepperdine Waves. The Lopes have made history tonight after a hard fought battle. Once again, the Lopes win this one. Three sets to two. More GC volleyball Saturday when the Lopes take on number two UCLA, not number 12, number two UCLA at six on GC TV. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash TCU. Have a great night, and go Lopes!